So now we're going to go over the fascial expansion for the knee. This is where we integrate fascial work with acupuncture or acupuncture points. So let's start out with actually the fascia that greatly influences the knee, which is the gluteal fascia. Now, with the gluteal fascia, we have to consider that this actually connects directly in to the iliotibial band. Now, it's highly recommended for clinicians to evaluate the gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata muscles. The gluteal fascia encompasses these two musculatures when the iliotibial tract plays a vital role, because it plays a vital role, in providing lateral stabilization for the knee. So we'd have to you know, take a look all the way up from here and consider that all of these are connected. We know that the glute max, the tensor fascia lata come together to actually form the iliotibial tract. Think of the iliotibial tract as a, basically a spring where you're loading your force and releasing their force, a swing spring. Really interesting structures that connect right together. Now, the fascia lata and the iliotibial tract offer the lateral knee stabilization and acts as a distal tendon insertion for the tensile, tensor fascia lata and the gluteus maximus muscle, attaching to the, ili, the tibia's lateral condyle and forms the anterior knee's retinaculum and stabilizes the knee in extension and partial flexion. So you start to see how all of these different structures are connected together. And then we come on to the crural fascia. This fascia envelopes leg muscles connected with fascia, lata, and deep foot fascia. Really interesting how we get connections all the way from the gluteal region all the way down to the knee. Now, let's see how this actually relates to acupuncture. So the first acupuncture point we're gonna go over is stomach 34. Now, this acupoint point can be found in terms of its location when the knee is flexed on the anterior aspect of the thigh on the line connecting the anterior superior iliac spine, so here, and the lower lateral border of the patella. So, patella here, lower lateral border, and then we're gonna go to chun above the patella. So, we're gonna have to use Mickey's hand here. So, Mickey, why don't you give us your thumb here? So, that'd be one, and one more in there, two. So, up from there, up, about right there. Is that a tender spot? Yep. Okay, and that is stomach 34. Now, you want to stimulate this point, not just pushing in, but rubbing around the area, looking for a thickening. Yeah, it feels like it's more right in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right there. So moving that around. So this is actually a pretty common one for pain and swelling around the knee joint. So working this area, I found this works really well with individuals with osteoarthritic changes. It's interesting too how they actually use this for different conditions in the lower extremities, so below the knee. You okay there? Yeah. So we'd stimulate this point for approximately 30 seconds to three minutes. Is that actually easing up a little bit already? Way more. Yeah. yeah. It's not as tender? No. Okay, good. So this is stomach 34. So the next point we're going to cover is spleen 10. Location can be found when the knee is flexed. On the medial aspect of the thigh, the point is too chun above the medial superior border of the patella. So, medial superior border. Mickey, why don't you give me a hand here just so you show size. Okay, there and about there. Okay, but this is supposed to be on the bulge of the medial portion of the quadriceps femoris, which would be kind of, in your case, more like there, I think. Yeah. Okay. How's that feel right there? Pretty Very tender? tender? Very tender. Okay. And again, we would get in there and we'd work this area out. And this is a common one that I actually do acupuncture on. But if we're using acupressure, we'd stimulate the area, getting in there and working it out for about well, 30 seconds to three minutes. Doing okay there? Yeah. Good. Excellent. And this is spleen 10. So the next acupuncture point we're gonna cover is stomach 36. This is on the interior aspect of the lower leg. Now, if we look at the point, we just basically follow the tibia, fibula, 
Take the point in between and follow it all the way to its superior aspect. Now, in terms of traditional Chinese medicine, this would be three chun below stomach 35, one finger width from the anterior crest of the tibia. But I think this is kind of an easier way to find it. <laughs> right there. Pretty tender, Mickey? Very. Very tender. So we get in there and we work the area out, not just pressing in, but actually moving it back and forth, rolling the area a little bit. Yeah, right in there. You can feel right in the depression and superior aspect. Pretty tender in there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a very common one used for pain in the knee joint. There's a lot of secondarily, secondary things we could use this for, but this is the common one we will use for in terms of musculoskeletal care. Chinese TCM practitioners will say that this actually tonifies the chi and the blood. The good news about it, it actually stops pain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this would be done for about 30 seconds to three minutes, and this is stomach 36. So the next point we're going to go over is liver eight. This is on the medial aspect of the knee. When the knee is flexed, the point is in the depression on the medial end of the transverse popliteal crease. So we're right across the edge. On the posterior border of the medial epicondyle of the femur. It's also on the anterior portion of the insertion of the muscles for the semitendinosus and membranosus. Okay, so Mickey, if I get it right over here, there we go. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So we want to move that around, kind of roll it in there. That's pretty tender, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So this is commonly used in pain for the medial aspect of the knee and the thigh. Tender right there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's just stay there for a second. Not too, too crazy. So we want to work this area out for somewhere between 30 seconds to 3 minutes. Now, as I mentioned, this is usually used for pain on the medial aspect of the knee and the thigh. But in Chinese medicine... They would also use this for lower abdominal pain. Now, that's not what we're using this for, but it's interesting how you can start to see some of the connections between increased neurological input and other areas of the body which may not seem related, but we can actually access them by using acupuncture points. Doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Good. So this is liver eight. So our final point here is going to be stomach 44. Now, this is located on the dorsum of the foot, proximal to the web margin between the second and third metatarsal bones, at the junction of the red and the white skin. So first and second, second and third. Now we're right in between there. Nikki, how are you doing there? Oh, uh, no, it's very tender. Very tender, oh. okay. So we want to get in there and kind of work the area out. And we're going to be here for approximately 30 seconds to three minutes. Okay. Feeling that quite a bit there, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Now, it's interesting when we start getting in some of these distal points is that we can affect so many different structures in the body. Now, besides relating to knee pain, they would obviously use this for pain on the top of the foot. But uh, commonly, they'd also use this for pain in the upper extremities, too, even as far up as the jaw. How are you doing there? Yeah. Not, loosened up it loosened easy. right up yeah. right away. Okay, good. So this is stomach 44.